What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Civilization 5 AI only old world start battle. Obviously new worlds now being used which means that name is pretty irrelevant. Uh, we're going to go over the info addicts because they're not breaking the game anymore so I thought why not show you what's going on which is good news because obviously at the end it means it easier for me to give us a clear winner which at the moment I'm not sure. I think it's going to be kind of one-sided still towards one sieve but I think we're going to see I don't think it'll stay like that. I don't think they can hold it up. But there is one statistic that is very scary. But we'll get to that in a minute. I uh, just noticed here Congo might be about to take this city. Just good that I spotted that. Because I'll bear that in mind for in a second. And yeah, let's get straight into these info addicts. I, it's a bit of a random time. Turn 278. But yeah, there we go. We'll have a look at them now. And let's start actually with population. So there we go. Likewise with... I think China's still just ahead of India in, in the real world, I'm pretty sure. But, I mean, it's getting pretty close. India's catching up. Um, but, yeah, China is leading here in, the, in this world with 16 million people. Head of Rhodesia's 15 million. Mongolia's 14 million. India's 11 million. And Parthia and Vietnam also have over 10 million. Quite a few with 9 million. The smallest population goes to Greece at 48,000 people. 150,000 in Siam there. But, um, yeah, quite... Majority got over a million, but yeah, it seems like Asia's got the most people in it, which is pretty cool. Crop yield, Mongolia, is that, I'm not going to do the maths off the top of my head, but probably just under twice as much as Parthia, um, who are in second. Rhodesia, again, they, they seem to be the top three. Vietnam are also doing pretty well there in fourth, so we'll probably see a lot of those four recurring, and then maybe a bit of a, more of a slug for fifth place each time, but yeah, Rhodesia. And Parthia very much neck and neck, and Vietnam just behind them. There's the Kulin in Australia, which makes sense. A lot of land in Australia, and they are have got the most of it. Greece have got the least again. Siam, Valachia again. Production dominated again by Mongolia, 541. Maybe it's a bit more one side than I thought it was going to be, but it doesn't seem like it when you're looking from when we're looking over it. But Rhodesia in second, 267 million tons. This time they are below. Half, I believe, of what Mongolia have got. Parthia then a bit further back, 226. Vietnam in fourth, and then they're almost half. They're, they're 100 or so lower than Parthia there. And the Kulin, right up behind them again. Maybe the Kulin will be doing well. we got Qing, Poland showing up to Songhai all over 100. Everyone else below 100. I imagine Greece. I don't know, Siam's lower than Greece, and then Wallachia is a bit ahead of them. Korea, Polynesia, both not doing too well either. GMP. Um, Siam are the only people losing money. Mongolia are making a ton of money. Okay, land area. There we go. Mongolia out in the lead. Four million square kilometers. They're huge. No surprises there. Parthia at two point four million. Rhodesia one point eight million. Vietnam one point six million. One point five. And again, the Kulin in fifth. That's interesting. Qing then again are around the top. Britain are actually doing pretty well. I think that uh, they do have a big chunk of Scandinavia. The Songhai. Uh, smaller than I thought. Um, Portugal, India as well. Around. Military manpower once again. Mongolia are winning. 263,000 soldiers. We have a new entrance into that sort of top five area. With the Songhai. 221,000. They actually have the second biggest army. Only by 1,000. Ahead of Parthia at 220,000. And Rhodesia also on 220,000. Poland are in fifth. 196,000. Which could see some from Europe. Sort of keeping up. Uh, the Kulin in 6th, which is surprising. I didn't think they had that much stuff in Australia because they haven't taken out Kimberley yet. Congo are in 7th. India 8th. There's China 9th. There's a bit of a drop-off towards China. And Denmark are in 10th um, there as well. The smallest military goes to Greece, just behind Siam. Belgium have a very small army. I'm America. Polynesia is a bit bigger. And Japan, and these are sort of a different... These are like mid-tier sieves, except Valachia. They're just... Valachia just have a strangely strong army compared to their size. Uh, let's ignore this stuff. Social policies. Is Poland winning? Wouldn't surprise me. Nope, they're not. They're fifth. That is a surprise. India, 25. Gandhi, what are you doing? Um, I've noticed I pronounce Gandhi, there you go, differently every single time. I, I don't know. No one's complained to any of them, so that's good news. Switzerland, in second. Um, 23 policies. Vietnam, 21. A level with Rhodesia. Poland, 20. Parthia just off here at 19. And happiness, is anyone negative? That is normally what I look out for. And yes, Portugal are. Oh, that sucks for you, Portugal. Also, we see here who's dead. Morocco, the Huns, the Soviet Union, Nigeria, Carthage, the Vandals, and Babylon. I'm seeing a recurring theme here. The uh, sieves with the at the start of their name. Three of them are dead. Is there any... The Kulin are still alive. The Ottomans are still alive, to be fair. 
It's where the units are moving. Yeah, they are. Okay, that just confused me a bit, but that's, that shouldn't be a surprise. Technologies, Greece are the lowest, Valachia down here, Polynesia, that sucks for you guys. But in the lead, on 47, we have Mongolia and Vietnam. Vietnam, very good with technology. Rhodesia and India as well, only one behind. India's a bit of a surprise. There are some strong sieves out in Asia, though. Poland in fifth. 45, Switzerland 44, so again, good to see the Europeans doing well. Belgium are actually in ninth as well, which is a bit of a surprise, but I mean, their capital's kind of huge. Well, their only city is very huge. Parthia are up here too. Mercuria, another one we haven't really seen towards these top end of the statistics. Good to see them around. Rhodesia, oh no, Rhodesia are there. Um, who's not present here? It's a bit I'd expect, but no, they're all there. Parthia's just a bit behind. Um, net gold, Parthia is actually winning. Mongolia, I mean, it's probably trying to support that huge army, which is why cities, this is astonishing. Mongolia have 31 cities, apparently. Who knew? But uh, Parthia are second with 12. Kulin and Rhodesia third and fourth with nine. Great Qing have eight. Portugal seven. Then the Songhai, Britain and Vietnam have six. India, Garamanti is five. Quite a few people on four, so I'm going to stop there. Um, science output. Mongolia. They are making more than Vietnam. Almost twice as much as Vietnam, which tells you where that technologies table should be going. Rhodesia are actually not too far behind for once in a category. I mean, they are quite far behind, but it's a lot closer than some of the other categories. Parthia are away off the Rhodesia. India in fourth. Good job. Um, and other than that, there's culture. India is winning. There you go. That's why they've got so many good social policies. Switzerland again in second there. Very peaceful in Europe. These two are quite far ahead as well of Mongolia. China in fourth, Rhodesia fifth, Vietnam sixth, Parthia down here seventh. And this will be fascinating to see who wins the game now because I, I, not to see who wins. I mean, I'm going to be honest, it's going to take seeing this. Mongolia needs like a huge coalition to bring it down now. I don't think that will be enough. Um, like Qing and Parthia would probably be after ones to do it and they'd probably need help from elsewhere too. Um, but the rest of the top four is going to be probably fascinating. But uh, Wonders, Rhodesia with seven, which is impressive. <laughs> Switzerland and India and Kimberley have three. Parthia, Sicily, Qing and China have two. Quite a few people have one. Um, and do we need to look at anything else? I don't think so. Well, let's quickly look at the religion overview. And um, someone did want me to go through like all the beliefs as well, which I haven't done at any point. So we'll do that too. But the dominant religion, even more so than before, is Hinduism from India. Now in 64 cities, that is, I think, more than the rest combined. I'm not going to do the maths. It, it's pretty close. Um, but yeah, that's definitely at least 50%, I'd say, of the cities. Maybe just under, but you know what I mean, around 50%. The second biggest religion, though, is still pretty big, and that is in from Mercuria, and that is Sikhism, 39 cities, and then the rest, 14 cities for Eastern Orthodox, which is in South Africa, from Ethiopia, we've got 9 cities from Buddhism, from Valachia, 5 for Congo's Catholicism, 3 for Me Arabia's Islam, and 1 for Shinto from Japan, which I believe is just Tokyo, over here, yes it is, yep, yep, and quickly, I don't want to make, there's a lot of beliefs, oh my goodness, this is a mess, okay, um, Maybe I'm not going to go through all this. I apologise. There is a lot. Um, let's go through the main ones. So um, what, what are the main two? So Hinduism and Sikhism were the big ones. We'll go over those. We can ignore the rest. Um, Hinduism has got cathedrals. And I'll just go through the beliefs. I won't go through the rest. But um, it's also got Feed the World. I'm sure you will all know what these are. Anyway, what else has Hinduism got? If it's got any more, it has got Holy Order. And is that it? Nope, it's got Jes Jesuit education. And I think that might be it for Hinduism. Uh, oh no, and Sacred Path, Pantheon, and also World Church. There we go, and let's just check. The other one is Sikhism. Okay, let's see what Sikhism's got. They've got Underground Sect. Uh, Sikhism... Papal primacy, mosques, missionary zeal, and what else have you got? Oh, Guru ship, and nearly there. We're getting there. Is this is is that? Can you? I don't know if you can. No, desert folklore, and that's because Mercuria are in the desert, and that's it. But yeah, there you go. I'm sure. 
If you're if you were interested in that, I'm sure you actually know what all of them do anyway, or have a good idea. So there you go. That helps you out. Let's just check. So India did just take this, and Mongolia did just take Damascus too. So there we go. So some stuff going on in the Indian Peninsula, but I don't think we'll be seeing any more stuff going on in that region. Oh, I'm just checking. There's no cities being sieged anywhere. I don't think there is, um, except that one we saw, which was the Congo. Um, the Garamantes did just take this from the Vandals to eliminate them. Mali have had a few wars declared against them, but I think they'll be fine. Egypt are going to lose this city probably soon. Not sure when, because they should go first. If they're actually, they're probably gone already, so Congo might be able to take it now. I don't know how the Congo got it in the red. I just thought I'd point that out. But um, Mali also have a city over here, so don't worry if they do get attacked. Songhai v Polynesia. Everyone's attacking Polynesia. I don't really know why. It's currently a disease breakout. I think this did start in the Rhodesian capital. There's obviously a bit of a race for South America going on right now. Uh, Mali are the first here. And they're being followed by Rhodesia, Congo, and the Zulu by the look of it. Although I don't know whether the Zulu are actually coming or not. It looks like they are. But earlier they did send one up the coast. So they might not actually make it the whole way. It could be sad. Very sad. And we don't, we not, don't see them make it. No, you're still going. Okay, Japan still has New Zealand. That That's fun. Um, this region's still there. But yeah, Vietnam's starting to put in a bit of a show for themselves. The problem for them is India are also starting to look pretty strong, which could sort of make it difficult for Vietnam. You look further. Vietnam are in a tough spot. They can get rid of Siam. Maybe they can go after Indonesia if they build enough boats, but they don't really have a navy. And Mongolia seem to be continuing for the rest of Arabia. This is not good for Arabia who seem to have finally taken a city, and also, I mean, this city here in the southern part of the Arabian Peninsula in Yemen, stroke Oman, um, whichever one it is, um, is very big. Oh, oh, Babylon's falling. Okay, there is two cities being sieged, and Babylon's quite a big one for Parthia, who are one of the contenders that could still win if they try, and Mali did just settle right in the middle of the Amazon rainforest, which I respect that. Good job. I mean, maybe coastal would have been the usual one, but no, you settled there. No shame in that. But there we go. The Congo did grab a city, and they're still doing okay. They were up there for some of those statistics, you know. And that's probably gonna not give road, not allow Rhodesia to do too much more, unless they go through a very tough war with the Congo. I mean, they could go after the Zulu, but even then, the Zulu aren't super weak either. But um, that would be easier probably than the Congo, and that outbreak did just come to an end. And Parthi is just yet to do its job, and I think this city I didn't touch upon before. But there we go, the Kulin in Baja, California here. Mongolia just settled here. There is a ton of Danish units here, which is weird because there is no no Danish settlers here. It's a ton of Zulu caravels, so they probably are heading for the New World. See, we've got the two Sicilies finally here. Garamantes might eventually settle. Um, one day, just just one day they might. Denmark is still just doing nothing. Parthia, oh, what is going on, Mongolia? I have no idea. Valachia has a ton of units, and, I mean, they need open borders from the Khazar. Just, the Khazar have a big army, to be fair, as do Poland. This region, there's definitely some fear of Parthia and Mongolia, but let's just focus on this, because it's the only city that should fall soon and if it doesn't fall i'll be very disappointed there is a lot of ottoman troops it's going to change hands a few times so parthia better not be retreating the rest of their military just yet also if i was parthia i really don't know who i'd go for but i would consider finding i'd consider teaming up with poland to take out the khazar and i would because they're a bit of a thorn in your side i mean obviously you don't want to fight mongolia because they're both sides of you technically and pretty scary um, you don't want to fight Mongolia just yet anyway, without a friend either. But um, if they could go after maybe Persia again, I mean, it would be difficult with all this terrain, but maybe it's possible. The AI tends to find a way. Valachia, by the way, is now under attack by the Sicilies. This is never going to work. And Denmark, again, not going to work. The Khazar are probably going to need to do this. And even then, these three citadels are occupied by Valachian troops, which makes it very difficult. But yeah, Valachia may actually survive just because there's so many mountains and stuff. And those citadels make it even harder if they can keep their units in there. Um, but yeah, Babylon should fall next turn. But the Ottomans have actually got more units around now, which can make it tougher. We saw actually the unit that would have taken it 
to die. So um, yeah, there's going to be some more fighting here just yet. The Ottoman Ottoman Empire isn't giving up too easily. They're still here, still doing pretty well. I'm surprised they're actually. I mean, they look they've kind of realistic Ottoman Empire. They've lost a bit, but you know, I'm impressed. see this is the only thing to focus on right now so this is what i'll look at i will be looking also at the race for south america as it unfolds and the ottomans push parthia back i'm sure parthia will do the same thing they just go second because they're a mod because i don't know how long this city's been here but the Khazar have settled over here so for anyone interested there's some random cities up here denmark the garamantes have one and they have fr a frigate uh, actually, to be fair, so do Parthia. I think that they settled that just to cut other people off. And Valachia actually have a second city up here. I didn't know that either. But um, yeah, so far in the New World, we've got Mongolia, Qing, Sicily, Kulin, and who else? And Mali. And Rhodesia and the Songhai have just arrived. Didn't even notice the Songhai were coming. Um, I missed them just a second ago. I might have noticed them in the previous video. Mongolia still have that navy and it's destroying some Arabian boats uh, units that have stupidly embarked and uh, Mongolia is now always Siam um, I don't know they could probably take this I mean I don't know how they they need to get their boats back before this closes off or they have to go the long way around but um or they might just keep these boats out here in the Indian Ocean instead so they are pretty probably they are the strongest nation <laughs> that borders anything it doesn't matter they are the strongest probably in the Pacific they just it's a bit spread out so it doesn't look like they're too strong but they are probably really strong like that's i think the thing with mongolia it's very spread out i mean you look at this this is pretty strong pretty scary they've got a lot of kashyyyk still maybe it's time to get rid of those i mean i'm sure the ai uses them better than i did i am doing um but even so they should probably not be waiting around there there's not there's just not much going on at the moment, is there? It's just quietened down a little bit. It's normally these go through these quiet periods, and then we have some insanely hectic periods. Um, Western Europe is still incredibly quiet, to be fair. Um, Palermo. There you go. I said it right. I know I said it wrong a few episodes ago. So there you go. It is Palermo, which I believe is pretty accurate, if I'm not mistaken. I think it is around here somewhere in Sicily. So that, that's pretty cool. Um... Yeah, it was good to see Sicily's grab Carthage. I'm surprised they settled in North America, but oh, Arabia and Mongolia, both <laughs> Arabia is trying to get escape Mongolia by attacking the same people. Egypt have also declared war. The fidget spinner is still here. What are you doing, Songhai? I want to know who they're at war with. That'd probably be important to know. So they're just moving their army through people, not actually doing very much. And I mean, it's the second biggest army in the world, so we should probably keep an eye on what it's doing a bit more. Are you at war? Oh no, this, I think it's the Garamantes attacking this. And Denmark, why does your turn take so long? What are you doing? Probably negotiating deals to get their troops through Belgium or something. Sounds stupid. But, yep, their turn is taking ages. I might be... No, I don't think so. They say it might be the World Congress doing something, but, um, nope. Now Mongolia's turn will probably take like two minutes. No trade Ethiopia and Mongolia. That is that is brutal. I'm loving this. There we go. The Songhai settling the city of Zhen. Probably. I usually say Jene, but because there's no D in the front, we'll just call it Zhen. But there we go. That is the second city in South America. And Rhodesia about to join. So we're actually having a very interesting... African colonial race, which is something we haven't had for a while, which will keep me entertained. Congo and Zulu, yep, both coming over. This could be really exciting. Mali could do really well. No one seems to have a second settler yet, though. I'm just, just noticing they're all being a little bit cautious. I think, yeah, the Zulu are the furthest away. Um, but yeah, no one's sending any more than two. Oh my goodness, Rhodesia, you do have quite a big navy. If only these were frigates you would be very scary, but they're not. And yeah, this must be the Garamantes, I imagine, because the Songhai just <laughs> walking around. I don't think it'd be them. They're not that stupid. Um, Mercuria, 
What happened to all your stuff? I swear you had so much more stuff. And yep, the Garamantes did just take that city. So there we go, the Garamantes all of a sudden sort of exploding. Since Carthage died. Um, but yeah, but I mean, it's not going to be enough. Because the Songhai can like wipe them out whenever they wanted to. But the Songhai just seem to be having a few difficulties at the moment. Doing whatever they need to be doing. They're just a bit slow. Um, come on, Songhai. No, there's a special place in my heart for you. The fidget spinner is now broken. That is that is very sad. Song, how won't you take out Mali? You could take this city here. That'd be good. And then you could take out their capital, which would be amazing. I mean, they're safe now. They are now in the Amazon rainforest, living a new life. Still no one in, like, Mexico. I mean, like, I guess you can count Baja California as Mexico. Maybe a bit of this. I, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure... No one in Central America, basically. That's what I mean. There's another Mongolian settler. Just making his way across. Kind of more... Yeah, this, this is definitely Canada. Um, Garamantes, I don't know where they're going. They're just having a walk. They, they don't really want to settle. Korea. You ever going to take Japan? Or do anything? Or even be taken out? I, I don't know. You have open borders with Qing. It's interesting. What happened to Qing's army? It used to be huge. I think they used it all trying to attack Vietnam over here. Um, China actually seems to now be the strongest sort of non-Mongolia, <laughs> non-Mongolian civ in this region. Um, Beijing's now at 30 population. Shanghai here's at 15 as well. And obviously they have the Philippines with its Guangzhou now at 9. So they're not doing too bad. Research agreements, and there we go. Rhodesia just entered the modern era, which is surprising because they don't have frigates, but they're in the modern era. That's a bit random. Um, I don't think you've got your priorities right, Rhodesia. Something gives me it's just a hint. Uh, there is another Qing settler, and it's probably not going for North America. It's probably going for this island here, but I'm not going to judge them. I don't have any coastal cities, so it's I mean, it's okay. They've built some frigates to have a bit of a impact in the Pacific. I wonder if Japan will hold on to Tokyo for the whole game. That'd be interesting to see if they do. Um, Rhodesia, have they made it? Okay, so they're in the mainland Rhodesia of South America. Well, it's all mainland South America, but um, we'll see where the settler heads because they've got the Songhai here. We've got the spot by the river. Um, the resource, I mean, I was also this good spot here with Chiro de Potosi. I actually don't see El Dorado. Maybe it's not on this map. Or maybe I'm looking in the wrong place like an idiot, but I don't see it. So I don't think it's on this map. But yeah, there's normally a good spot on the other map that's deformed and oddly shaped that um, makes El Dorado really... Is El Dorado's like next to it, so you can just grab it, which would have been a good spot, but they're probably gonna have to go somewhere else. The Zulu is still a way away, and the Congo are about to land nearer to Mali along the coast. But there's other people exploring here. Is this Switzerlander here? I don't think we'll see them settle here, to be honest. Um, although I've not really looked at the North Atlantic. I mean, I don't know that like anything's coming. And Switzerland could send units if they wanted to. They've got a got a gap. <laughs> Between these giant Portuguese borders. Portugal, I'm very disappointed you haven't settled anywhere else. Very disappointed in you. Um, Britain as well. A little bit less in Britain because they have Scandinavia, but still. Well, not even Scandinavia, but, you know, they have a bit of it. Disappointed no one has taken out Belgium. Like, you know, as much as I don't want Belgium to die, because that would be harsh. I'm sure there's people rooting for Belgium. They're not really going to win anymore, so it wouldn't hurt if someone took them out. I mean, Poland and Switzerland could definitely team up and try something. Poland just pieced out with Korea, and I haven't really been focusing, but Babylon is still yet to fall. But the Ottomans, I would say, are running out of units, but there is a lot of Janissaries over here, so... It ain't over yet. <laughs> ain't over yet, and Parthia are kind of... Well, they've got stuff, but they are running out too. They are running out. Rhodesia just was like, yep, whatever, we're strong. Well, actually, the Songhai is strong too. But it's just a colony. Like, what, what's going to happen? But there we go, Rhodesia and the Songhai. Maybe for the first time, getting on each other's nerves, those two most powerful nations in Africa. 
that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. It's not the best place either. I mean, they got pearls. But yeah, we've seen both of these guys go coastal. So we'll see what we haven't seen from Mali. Congo have now landed on that coastline, and the Zulu are on their way. This is sort of all that's going on at the moment, other than the war, the battle for Babylon, which can take a while. But that is going to be it for this video, as always. If you have enjoyed, it would be awesome if you could leave a like and a comment. If you are new, it would be awesome if you could subscribe as well. And anyway, thank you so much for watching, as always. If you have enjoyed it, that is awesome. I've already said this already, so I just feel like an idiot now. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.